Alright, so I'm back for whatever reason you are here because you got a notification from YouTube probably. So as the description says, I'm just back to go through my skill build, PvP, PvE, and my gear. So let's go through the skill build here. The reason why I got level 18 charge board is because of the 162 percent. Okay, what I mean by that is that when you got charge board, okay. 162% The reason why it's max is because I have a class mastery tree here Your um, class mastery tree attack increases by 50% for each hit So showing the charge board percentage here 162% attack per hit The 50% does not show here That means you need to do your calculations 162% plus 50% of that Is 243 that means 243 is for every single hit that you do. Okay, note that the class master tree, the number of lightnings is changed to 8. Which means that 243 per hit, okay? Let's assume that we got 24 hits. So 243 times 24 hits, you will get a total of 5832% of total damage for every 10 seconds. And that is excluding a damage blade. If a damage plate, you can probably do up to the same amount of damage as the enhanced Holy Burst damage. And it's for every 10 seconds, okay? Note that Holy Burst is every 25 seconds, even under Consecration, because Consecration plate, plated Consecration with cooldown is 24 seconds. Yes. So Charge Bot is actually a very powerful skill. It is one of our main DPS skills. So you always have to use it or you'll lose a lot of damage. I don't think I have to explain most of this. Holy cake. Well, it is mostly for utility utility purposes and just for kicking. Dive kick is there, so I can have an extra movement buff, like so I can move slightly faster. So it'll be faster for me to evade attacks when needed. I don't have to explain most of this. I got heal because heal right. That three percent could save a life, and you will never know when. So if someone is on low HP, you can heal that 3% and okay, just let's just say for example, if they got like a debuff, burn, poison, you can still save their lives by that 3%. So it does a lot. Block, I don't have to say this. To block attack, play safe, all those, that kind of stuff. So the reason why my mind conquers at level 3 is not because level 3 is enough, but it's because I need like, 1 SP to do something, which I will go through in a bit. So my free skill build here. Right? And you can see my relic. I can I can learn lightning relic, yes. Because this this is actually one build that I plan to use soon. Which is actually my relic build. The relic build in the future is only when the Grand Cross and Holy Burst changes come. But what I mean by those changes is that they'll be boosting these two skills, Grand Cross and Holy Burst, on its own. So because of the S2 reductions to some of the skills like first aid, I will be able to learn lightning relic, healing relic, and cure relic. That means Inquisitor can finally be like a semi-support in terms of cure. Along with Miracle Relic, you have two cures. Alongside a Saint or whatever or whatever other support characters there are. Yeah. Mindbreaker is max because it's the one skill that you're using almost all the time. Later, if a cooldown, it becomes one of your best damages, which is usually around rank 6 to 10. So, if it goes around above that, I think something is wrong. Yes. Lightning Bolt is max due to obvious reasons because you need the awakening for it. My chain lightning is a level 1 reason because I need the SP for my relic build. So, with the level 1 lightning relic, I mean the chain lightning. Sorry. The reason why it's at level 1 because the, first of all, you don't use it as much as often. The only time that you use Chain Lightning ever is really just for re-electrocuting the enemies. For Awakened Detonate, yeah, this is the part I'm going to talk about. I, I'm quite sure most of you already know this, but I've been saying that Detonate Awakening sucks and so on. Yes, I still think it sucks, I'm just saying. But, I, the reason why I got Awakening Detonate is because mainly I want to play change in playstyle, and second, I want to give you another chance. And so far, 
it been working quite fine for me. Sometimes it doesn't even activate, which pisses me off. But yeah, Avenging Wave is learned due to obvious reasons. First aid is learned due to obvious reasons again, because it's 240% of your magic attack. Mind you, okay, this is my magic attack in town. When buffed, I'll be gaining 27% of this. So go and calculate yourself, then times 240% of that, and that will be the amount healed. Basically, looking at my HP, I'll be healed up to more or less almost my entire HP. Have a link adjustments at level 3 because I don't know, I just like it. It's really up to you. You can leave it at level 1. You can use it for utility purposes or damaging purposes because you know you're so that you're scared to the extent we need to iframe all the way. Either way, both ways works. Okay, shock transition. Yes, this Q. The reason why it's at level 1, because as you can see, leveling up only increases the range, it does not increase the chance or increases the damage of it. At the same time, as you can see, the skill, de the skill description says, has a chance to spread electrocute effect to enemies within a certain range. That means, right, you need to do, you need at least two enemies there to for this to even, you know, for this to even execute at a 30% chance. So you could like save 3 SP and put it somewhere else which is like much better. Consecration EEX. Consecration is max for very obvious reasons again. The first reason is obviously because it's a vacant skill. Second because it is your top damager within the top 3 damage. That provided you use it all the time which you obviously have to do that. On my vacant side, I think I don't have to see this that much yeah. Just learn everything. Or uh, if not, you can just remove a vacant detonate. It's really up to your playstyle. But know that if you're going to go for detonate EX only, you have to adapt this kind of playstyle where you need to be very, very close to the enemy to do all hits almost every time you're going to use this skill. If not, just forget it and get your awakening. Yes. The next thing here is the gears. I mean, the last time I did a gear review, I don't think there have been much changes. I'm just gonna go through them again. Yeah, my greedy rune dragon and helm has not changed. The only things I got for my level 95L is my upper body, my slayer gloves, and two weapons. So far, I'm left with my lower body and shoes. All the genesis accessories have not been changed, so it's still the same. Right now, my costume is more or less the same from the previous video, so there isn't much changes as well. I'm still using my Sandiv Deco and stuff, yeah. Heroji has no change as well, it's still all the same. So, really there isn't much that I can talk about, <laughs> yeah. The um, Tendismon has no change as well so far. One reason because... I, I need go. I need to sell off my Tendismon Essence, so I can't get much. Yeah, if you want the proper looking through my gear stuff, uh, I will place the link to the previous gear review in the description. And the next thing, I will show you my plan build, the build that I plan out, which is here. As you can see, this is only after the change in Korea. They changed the Grand Cause and Holy Burst damage to become higher on its own. Which actually a boost to Inquisitors as well. Because when Grand Cross got boosted, I calculated the damage. So if you manage to call, to use your normal Grand Cross and Holy Burst together with the consecrated ones, your damage will increase quite a lot actually. But that is only if you can find a way to do so. Alright, so I guess I'll stop here for now. And thank you for coming by.